وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا Islam, the obedience of the mother supersedes that of the father, precedes that of the father. It's in Al Islam, as the Prophet says to this man, as reported by Bukhari Muslim, when he came to him, Who should be my best companion, Ya Rasulullah, my best friend, my closest companion? And then the Prophet says, Umuk, your mother. Who's next? Your mother. Who's next? Your mother. And then the, the, the Prophet says, Your father. You know what this kid did? He wrote a letter to his mom. Mom, I cleaned my room today. Ten dollars. I took the garbage out. Five dollars. I shoveled the snow. Fifteen dollars. I did the dishes. Twenty dollars. I cleaned my room. So much. So much. And then at the end, total, total, whatever the total was. The mother took the same piece of paper, flipped it aside, and then she wrote, I carried you in my womb for nine months, bearing all the pain, free of charge. When I gave birth to you, I felt so much pain, terrible pain. I was screaming, giving birth to you. Of church. When you were a baby, I used to feed you first before feeding anybody else, even before feeding myself. Free of charge. When you used to get sick, I used to nurse you, stay the whole night with you, cry before Allah, making duha for Allah to give you shifa. Free of charge. And at the end, she says, total love. Your mother. Your mother. Look. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed us with our father and our mother. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has blessed us with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one that we bear witness and testify that he is a slave and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we also bear witness and testify that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only Lord worthy of being worshipped Lord of humanity Lord of mankind creator of all existence he is the most merciful the compassionate one that has bestowed upon us many mercies, many gifts, many
many favors. One of them, a bounty that we can never repay, a bounty that if we try for the rest of our lives, we could never give justice to, a bounty of our parents, of our father and our mother. Brothers and sisters, I ask you by Allah, by Allah, how many of you have left the home, your mother crying, your father's upset, you leave the home in the middle of the night. How many of you have got into your room, received a phone call in the middle of the night from a friend, you get dressed, you leave. Your parents are asking, where are you going? You show no answer. You leave the house. Your mother stays up the night crying and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nothing happens to you, that you are not in a bad situation. Crying tears of sadness and frustration. And what is it because? Is it because the drugs that you are taking or is it because the girl that you are seeing? Or is it because the boy you are seeing? Or is it because the car that you wanted to buy? Or the friends that you wanted to hang out with? Is that why you made your mother cry? Is this a reason to make your mother cry? Is this a reason to allow your father to be upset? How many of us have cared not about the feelings of our mother? A mother that carried you for nine months. A mother that when you would cry at night when you were only a child, she will wake up at two, three o'clock in the morning. Dozy still from her sleep. Grab you. Breastfeed you. Change you. Wash you. Rock you back to sleep. Is this the mother that you allow to cry? because of the dealings that you are making a mother that when you fall sick she will stay up during the night calling a friend calling a doctor calling the ambulance you have a fever a mother that for the sisters she dreams of the day that she dresses you in your wedding dress that she gives you to your husband Sisters and brothers, these are your parents. This is your mother. The mother that the Prophet wasallam said that at her feet is Jannah. That at her feet is Jannah. A mother that when one of the companions, their mother died, he began to cry and cry for days. And then the companion said to him, why do you cry? Don't you know that death is just and death becomes of everyone and every soul should taste death? He said, that is not the reason why I cry. I know death comes to every soul. I know that death is true. But the Prophet ﷺ said that your parents are two doors into Jannah. That your parents are two doors into Jannah. And now one door has closed. I only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong the opening of the other door. Brothers and sisters, if your parents are alive, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You still have a chance. If your parents are alive, then go back tonight. Show them your love. Show them the regret that you have for leaving them that night or that day for allowing them to be saddened or cry. Is it your wife that is going to lead you into Jannah or your mother? It is your mother. Sisters, is it your husband that is going to lead you into Jannah? After your mother and after your father. We do not underestimate the power that our mother and our father have. The Prophet said, out of all the du'ats that are Answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dua of the mother 
and in another narration, the dua of the parents is not rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, if your parents have passed, then it's not too late. You still have enough time to perfect yourself, to become righteous, because this is a condition for your dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your pref for your parents because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when a person dies all of his deeds is cut except three and he mentions that one of them is a pious a pious child to make dua for them and let's put two lines underneath the word pious you must be pious for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that dua from you for your parents. You must be pious. You must pray. You must be of good character. You must fast. You must read the Quran. You must follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the sisters, they must wear hijab. They must be modest. They must also follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the teachings of our mothers, the mother of the believers, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. Brothers and sisters, our parents, our mother, our father. As the Prophet ﷺ said to a man that came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, who do I respect most? Who do I honor most? And he said, your mother. And then the man asked again and he said, your mother. And he asked the third time and he said, your mother. And the fourth time he said, your father. To show you the importance of your mother and to show you the importance of your father. The Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, Ala unabbi'ukum bi akbar al-kaba'ir. Shouldn't I tell you of the greatest of sin? The greatest of sin. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? He said, Al-Ishraq Billah wa al Walidain. To bring partners, to associate partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to be unjust, to be undutiful to your, to your parents. So Allah is saying, this love I created in your parents. Now you need to give it back to them. You need to give it back to them and these are the incentives for you. Because Allah knows that the reverse love is not as pure as the love that came from top down. The love that we're going to give back is not the same. We all love our parents, we all do. But it is a love that is, you need to struggle with it. You need to remind yourself about it. You need to calm yourself down. You need to control your tongue. So Allah has given us all of these incentives. And of course the Quran and the Sunnah are full of the rights of the parents. Our Prophet said that in the rida rabbi rida walidain that the happiness or the contentment excuse me the pleasure of Allah is found in pleasing the parents wa inna ghadab rabb and the anger of Allah is found in making the parents angry hadith in muslim imam ahmed the pleasure of Allah is found in pleasing the parents and the anger of Allah will be incurred in displeasing the parents and in the famous hadith that all of you have a uh, a phrase of a man came to the prophet and he said oh messenger of Allah i want to uh, enter Jannah. How do I enter Jannah? How do I enter Jannah? So the Prophet ﷺ said, that is your mother alive. Is your mother alive? The man said, yes, she is alive. So the Prophet ﷺ said, find her feet and put yourself to it. Ilzimha. Stick yourself to her feet. This is an expression in Arabic, of course, which means humble yourself to her khidmah. Humble yourself to her uh, service, right? Find, uh, that uh, that uh, go stick yourself to her feet. And there you will find Jannah. And from this we get the common phrase that Jannah تحت أقدام الأمهات That uh, Jannah is underneath the feet of the mother. The Prophet didn't quite say that phrase, but he said a phrase which is uh, similar to it. That ilzimha, that, that, uh, that basically stick yourself to her shin or her legs. Jannah. Jannah will be around that area. So he gave this metaphor, this parable here, that lower yourself, humble yourself. 
down to the khidmah of your mother, to service your mother, you're going to find Jannah around that area. And in the famous hadith reported in uh, Sunan al-Nisa'i in this wording, and it's also in al-Bukhari, that, the, that uh, a man came to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have come to dedicate myself to you. And I have come all the way from Yemen. Now, of course, he's in Medina. Yemen is a thousand miles away. I have come all the way from Yemen. And I have come to dedicate my life to whatever you want. And I want to do jihad fi sabidillah. This is, of course, one of the highest things that we can do. A legitimate jihad. I have come to dedicate myself to you, your khidbah, and to jihad fi sabidillah. And I've come all the way from Yemen. And I've, I've even left my parents who are old and weak. I've left them even though they need me. And they're even crying because they need me. But I've come to you instead. In other words, he's boasting. He's boasting that I left my parents crying to come to you. This is how sincere I am. So the Prophet ﷺ, he found this amazing. And he said, do you really want the pleasure of Allah? The man said, of course. So the Prophet ﷺ said, irji' ilayhima. Go back to them right now. Go back to them right now. Wa And make them laugh. Just as you cause them to cry. That's how you're going to find Jannah. You came here thinking that you're going to come to Jannah by leaving them crying and you came. Now notice this man became a Sahabi by coming to Medina. He wasn't a Sahabi. He came to Medina, he became a Sahabi because he saw the process, of, right? And he's entering Medina and he's so happy that yes, I'm going to dedicate my life to the service of Islam. But he says, I left my parents crying. So the Prophet said, is this your version of Islam? Basically, he didn't say that way, but saying, is this what you think you're going to enter Jannah by causing your parents to cry and coming to me, he is Rasulullah, right? And, and wanting to do jihad fi sabirillah. There's something that is even more important than jihad fi sabirillah, and that is making khidmah and giving the rights of your parents. So he said, go back to your parents and make them laugh. Make them laugh just as you cause them to cry. A beautiful incident from the life of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, that Ibn Abbas was doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Ibn Abbas was doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Ibn Abbas lived in Mecca and Taif and he would always be in that vicinity. So he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba and there was a man doing tawaf with an elderly lady on his back. He was carrying this elderly lady on his back. When he recognized Ibn Abbas, he came running to him and he said basically, Oh Ibn Abbas, Oh Ibn Abbas, I have come from such and such a place. And he mentioned a faraway place. They say it was uh, in the area of, of Iraq or a faraway place. I have come from such and such a place. And this lady on my back, she is my mother. And she had the desire to come for Hajj for so many years. But we couldn't afford an animal, a camel or a horse. And so I put her on my back and I have come from that place in order to perform the Hajj. Have I now fulfilled the rights of my mother on me? Have I now fulfilled the rights of my khalas? Intah al-amr, how are we done? And so Ibn Abbas smiled and he said, what you have done is good, but you haven't even fulfilled a fraction of what your mother did for you. You haven't even done a fraction. The man said, Ya Ibn Abbas, I have come mashyan ala al I've come walking from that place with my mother on my back. And you say that I haven't even done a fraction? And notice, wallahi, this is psychology that will make us shudder. Look at what Ibn Abbas said. True person who understands human nature. He said, you haven't done a fraction because why? When your mother took care of you, she did it out of genuine love, wanting to see you flourish wanting to see you grow, wanting to see you live for a long time. Now that you're doing it back, you're doing it as a burden, as a, as a favor back to her, waiting for her to die.